A strange spiralling white light was spotted in the early morning sky over Sydney with even sceptical witnesses wondering if it was a UFO. One of our news crews spotted some mysterious lights in the sky during last night's 11 o'clock news and now we're trying to figure out what they were. It was truly a bizarre experience. Sightings of Messi may be the result of earthquakes. There's no one of them of the Loch Ness Monster. This thing was 10 foot tall. A series of strange red glowing lights floating in the sky behind us. He snapped three shots of this ape like creature. Security cameras caught a white orb wandering around the gym. A one million pound reward's being offered to anyone who can find conclusive proof that the Loch Ness Monster exists. The programming you are about to hear may include some information that is inappropriate or disturbing for minors. The statements, information, and opinions expressed by guests doesn't necessarily reflect the views of the Pop Odyssey Radio Network, its staff members, hosts, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Man, Myths, and Monsters, a show that pushes the boundaries of your fear, imagination, and sometimes your deepest nightmares as you explore the reality of what creeps and crawls and goes bump in the night. And now your hosts, Dr. William Lester, R. Gary Patterson, and Stephen Wren. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Man, Myths, and Monsters. Yes, it has been a while, but we are back tonight. Well, it's only been, uh, I guess, about a month or so, but uh, you are listening to Man, Myths, and Monsters right here on the Pop Odyssey Radio Network and the WHVR Digital Broadcasting Networks tonight. Now, we do, uh, both uh, Gary and William are on the line with me here, and they're both telling me we're kind of dropping out a little bit. So if you're having any problems with the streams, I know we have two high... Quality streams going outside. I'm dropping those just a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's been about a month since we've been up and uh, getting everything back in order. So we'll just uh, play along and uh, try to have as good a show as we can possibly have tonight because we've got some great guests lined up tonight. And they've actually been here with us before because we are going to be discussing Bigfoot, Sasquatch, all that great stuff tonight. And for some of you who might have heard this show before, actually, I think it was the July, June or July episode of Man, Myths, and Monsters. There was a third party that offered a $500,000 paranormal challenge. Now, if there is anybody out there that can actually, and even our guests tonight might be able to obtain one of these elusive creatures. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you can capture one of these things, let us know and we will put you in touch with the person that is, uh, well, I mean, essentially put that offer out there. I mean, it is a big payday, folks. And I realize it's quite the challenge, uh, and it's not just a Bigfoot or Sasquatch, it's also an alien or a werewolf, as crazy as that may sound. But if you can claim to capture, actually physically capture any of these things, we'll put you in touch with somebody. But Matt Sieber and Ron Luzzi of the East Tennessee Bigfoot Research Organization will be with us here tonight after the first commercial break. And if anybody out there would like to call in with any comments or questions, you can always reach us at 615 615- 866-1323 or toll free at 888-375-3123 and you can always join us in chat at popodysyradio.com it is a different chat from the WHVR digital broadcasting network so if you want to get in the direct chat flip on over there to the Pop Odyssey Radio side and uh, a special thanks to Alex over there in the UK he helped me this evening right before the show getting that flash chat back up and working so Alex thank you very much and hi to you and Becca in there it's great to see both of you back and messaging and all that great stuff like we used to do, but Gary, William, welcome back, guys. It's good to have you. It's been a while. 
Well, yeah, it has. I guess uh, we did one a few weeks ago, though. That was an interesting show that we enjoyed. Yeah, we did. Uh, actually, Todd Bates of the WHVR Digital Broadcasting Network hosted that for us. And you had a really good guest. And actually, it was referred by Allie Chesley and uh, Sharita Starr. And damn, Gary, she gave one heck of a reading to us that night. I mean, she was right on the money with everything she said to us that night. Well, yeah, and then she wrote me a nice long Facebook message telling me uh, even more. I guess she had to tell me in secret, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so, William, what sign are you, by the way? Uh, uh, my zodiac sign? Yes. Uh, Leo. A Leo. Mm -hmm. Well, being that I know and absolutely now, nothing what, about people, that, I can't have, help you. But People have told me that, um, you know, other people have told me that, you know, uh, when they look, when they Google Leo uh, online, that it, it turns up a picture of me. Um, so, <laughs> really? So I'm very much true to it, you know? <laughs> okay, so everybody go to google.com, click on images, and type in Leo, and you see if Dr. William Lester's sitting there on the screen. Yes. So. Interesting, William. Yes. I, I can't say that, uh, I don't know, maybe if I type in superstar, I'll see my picture or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. You know, you never know what will happen, but it's always right. good. It's always good. Well, that's, it's always good to have great dreams. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, a big dream is all it is, Gary. But, hey, it does. It never hurts to dream. It never hurts to dream. But Never no, but, hurts uh, to dream, and that's right. That's true. So, William, how you been? How's things going with the uh, university and all that great stuff? Everything's going great, and um, we it, – it's, you know, it's like every time we do a show, it's it's – it's right after you know we're always kind of trying new things at the institute and experimenting um so uh since we last spoke um we have added a new department which is the department of metaphysical sciences since it is the institute of metaphysics you know it's kind of like duh we need a department of metaphysical sciences uh and the other thing is something that happened quite unexpectedly but you know how things are, you know, things happen and you kind of go with it. Um, we um, have started to enter the uh, marketplace, if you will, uh, in Mexico. And, uh, you know, Mexico City, I don't, I don't know if it's the largest city in the world, but it's in the top five. Uh -huh. uh, and we've had a we've had a remarkable influx of interest coming out of Mexico. And so we're real excited about that. Um, and so, yeah, everything is growing. And, you know, this time of year, you know, we're a couple of weeks away from Halloween. So, you know, things kind of uh, speed up for us. So, good. Excellent. Excellent. Gary, are you still with us? I'm right here, oh, man. Oh, okay, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Looking out my window and seeing if I can see a Bigfoot staring in at me. Yeah, I would oh, love God. to cash in on that offer that's floating around out there, but, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I'd love to find one. Uh, I'd love to turn him in. Well, you're not too far from these guests we've got on here tonight. No, Gary, so. no, actually, one's a former student of mine, so I know him well. Well, maybe we uh, maybe ought to make a, and it's not too far from where William's at. I, maybe William ought to drive up and we can do an expedition. And, uh, well, what, what if we split it uh, five ways? That'd still be a pretty good payday. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah that, that would be good. But I just want to know who's going to rub, rub animal dung all over their body. I just need to know that. It's not going to be me. Now, is that a prerequisite to capture a Bigfoot? <sighs> I don't know. You got to mask your spe smell. I mean, Ted Nugent would do it. William, I dominate you to do that. Well, now see, Gary just said <laughs> that that Ted Nugent would do it. So. That ought to tell you right there. Uh, yeah, I can't that, say that I'm real surprised that Ted Newton would do that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's I, I don't know what to tell you other than it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I can see Ted mm. Nugent with that long hair and dung. Yeah, I, I just, no, no, it just wouldn't work. I, I just no. But he does it all the time. You know, he does it all the time. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. But see, Gary, you said the key word. He does it all the time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> We have never done it and don't right. intend to. Never. No, sir. But I don't know. Maybe we can get Matt to cover himself and dung and get out there. Without, I mean, that would doubt. be good, wouldn't it? Well, I'm sure that'll be one of the questions we ask these guys tonight is, you know, what is exactly that, you know, some of the things, you know, Todd had this guy on, 
I'm not going to say his name because this same person, and actually I helped Todd book this guy one time, but oh. uh, this same person was on Coast to Coast one time, caused a huge uproar at Coast to Coast. But they were talking about some of the luring tactics they used, and they were talking about syrup and pancakes, as crazy mm. as that sounds. Well, that'd be great for IHOP, wouldn't it? It would be great for IHOP. I mean, you can. I mean, get I can a, see it now. You know, you put a little syrup and pancake, and the place comes in filled with Bigfoot. Well, see, it'd be kind of like and you could. Man, that would be great. We could make money off that. Shoot, yeah. I mean, you're you're talking about a marketable product there. I mean, think about these guys on Duck Dynasty. I go into Walmart, and <laughs> over there in the hunting section, and you see these life-size cardboard cutouts of the Duck Dynasty guys. I think if we could do that with Bigfoot and pancakes. Well, well, how many how many years has Slim Jim been using the Bigfoot commercial? Hmm. Well, it is no, kind of funny. I have to yeah, admit, yeah, it's very funny. It's very fun. They've been doing that for years, and and, and I, you know, they keep making new ones, so it must be working for them. That is a good point. Yeah, messing with Sasquatches. I think that it's the it's the, uh, you know, the tagline there. Um, and uh, you know they, these, and I'm sure everybody's seen them, but these crazy commercials where people are, are eating Slim Jim, and they are, you know, they see a Bigfoot, and they they mess with it. You know, they they shoot it with the water hose. They do all kinds of crazy things, and the Bigfoot always gets the people in the end in some kind of ridiculous slapstick type way, and it's very funny. And they've been doing it for years. And it's, so it's like it's funny that Bigfoot has now kind of slipped into the mainstream. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's true. Yeah. But how yeah. about what is it? Harry and the Hendersons. Remember that one? Oh Lord. That's, oh yeah. That's way back. John Lipped yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it seems like, and you know, I never saw that film. I was just kind of aware of it out there. Um, but it seems like Bigfoot is always kind of right there you know in, in the popular culture in the entertainment culture whatever um and it's fine but if you notice whenever it gets whenever we try to get a little serious about it then you know there's a you know well wait a minute you know this is this is fun for cartoons and commercials and movies <laughs> but you know let's not get Let's not get scientific about this, you know. And so maybe the guest tonight can comment on that. Yeah, very true. Very, very yeah. true. But, you know, go ahead, Gary. Oh, I was just going to say it's an amazing world of pop culture. And, you know, there's many different varieties of Bigfoot. Or, you know, you got the skunk ape and all those things. So yep. I'm kind of anxious to hear what we have hiding in our woods. Well, you are pretty close to those nuclear reactors there in Oak Ridge, Gary. So, well, yeah, uh, but that's true, buddy. But if in our area, they would glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Easily found. Yeah, or, yeah. I don't know. We'll ask these guys. We'll, we'll see what they think about it. They'll probably think my theory is completely bogus, but hey, that's good. I'm all good for that. Well, bogus theories are a great basis for a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would make a actually that make a good radio show. Bogus theory. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we could come up with all kinds of crazy stuff. But everyone, we're going to go ahead and run to this first commercial break of the night. We're going to get our guests on the line: Matt Sieber and Ron Luzzi of East Tennessee Bigfoot org. Make sure you check them out, and of course, you can always check out William at Institute of Metaphysics com. They've got all kinds of programs and. Wonderful things, study courses, and all kinds of great things over there. If you're looking for a specific degree, all kinds of wonderful things, check him out. And we're going to run this quick commercial break. Come back. We'll talk with these guys about some Bigfoot tonight. If you want to call in, feel free to reach us at those contact numbers. But you are listening to Man Missing Monsters right here on the Pop Odyssey Radio and WHVR Digital Broadcasting Networks. Stay tuned, everyone. you got to pick up every yeah. Beat Nick's out to make it rich. Oh, no. I wonder so many different people to be that it's strange. Uh, 19 minutes past here, and you're listening to Man Missing Monsters here tonight, right here on the Pop Odyssey Radio at WHVR Digital Broadcasting Networks. 
Welcome back, everyone. And well, Gary, before we get into our guest tonight, there is something I needed to bring up when we opened the show up tonight. I forgot oh, about it. Oh, that's we, good. Yeah, yeah bring have, it up. Yeah, I just want to get this in there real quick because I don't want us to close out tonight and then forget this. But we've got a very special guest lined up one week from tonight. So I wanted you to put that out there for everyone. And we're going to be putting this announcement up on Facebook soon. And uh, we're working on the banners and everything for it now. But go ahead and spit out who we've got coming up next week. Well, I hope he's not going to be mad at me after tonight. <laughs> but uh, no, we made arrangements to have Tom Danheiser. And if you've not heard the name, if you've ever called in coast to coast, west of the Wa uh, Rockies or, you know, any of the lines, you'll hear Tom answer the phone. He's George Norrie's executive producer. So I thought it'd be fun because he doesn't do radio shows and he lives out in L.A. We've been good friends for years and uh, we go out and do many things together. So I convinced him it would be fun to come on. And talk about all the fun we did on Coast to Coast. Some of the things that you may not know. Some of the guests. And some of the funny things that happened while you didn't know that was going on. And uh, also how to get on Coast to Coast. Because he's the guy. Yeah, And oh, he's stuff. a wealth of uh, knowledge and funny guy. And hopefully we can do a good two hours with Tommy D. My good friend from Coast to Coast. Yeah, and we'll look forward to that. Now, that is... That is planned for next week, folks, but if there's any changes in that, we will, uh, of course, make an announcement and everything, but we will be putting the event up and everything here real soon and try to get that out in enough time for as many people to tune in and access that show as possible. But, William, welcome back, and we've got a couple really special guests on the line tonight. And, you know, we've talked about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, that big hairy beast that seems to be elusive from man <laughs> for God knows how long. I mean, we see videos, we see pictures of this thing. We've seen it, uh, the notorious photograph, I think that was taken, what, back in the 70s, that uh, I don't even know who the photographer was for it, but, you know, it's just a, it's a very interesting thing. I've always been 50-50 on the subject of Bigfoot. I'm open to it. It's one of those things that I would just, I would love to be able to see with my own eyes. But we've got two gentlemen here with us tonight that William has arranged from the East Tennessee Bigfoot Research Organization. You can check them out at East Tennessee, spell out the word Tennessee, Bigfoot.org, and it's Matt Sieper and Ron Luzzi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I, if Ron, if I'm not, I do apologize. Oh, yeah, that's close enough. No big deal. <laughs> but w welcome, gentlemen, and we're going to talk tonight with uh, Dr. Lester and both of you about, well, Bigfoot, Sasquatch. We want to be educated a little bit here, and, you know, and I want to hear the possibility, is it really feasible to think that one of these things can be captured and possibly caged not for kill but for like research purposes and things like that because we do have a third party caller that called in during the middle of the summertime that called in and we've got a commercial out for it but a five hundred thousand dollar paranormal challenge to somebody that can actually capture one of these creatures so what do you guys think i mean uh, tell us a little bit about your organization how you got started all kinds of great stuff like that take it away matt uh well um again um Tennessee bigfoot started back in 2005 after my oldest son, who was then 15 years old, actually saw a Sasquatch in our backyard, uh, probably less than five miles from Gary's home, I'm sure. And um, ever since then, I've just been more or less obsessed with uh, finding out more about this creature. And ever since then, I have I've discovered more and more. And I'm, I've found that this area here in East Tennessee, especially where I live, is a hotbed for these creatures. And uh, we have roughly 20 investigators now with our organization from all walks of life, uh, different areas of East Tennessee, who do these uh, investigations, who go out on expeditions and hunt and search and do and, and try to figure out what these creatures actually are. Hmm. Do you have to rub dung all over your body when you go looking for them? <laughs> <laughs> because we were talking before you guys came on and... We nominated William to be Dung Man. <laughs> and I respectfully declined. That's right. So we're going to try to bring Ted Nugent if we go out. He, he doesn't matter. He, he, hey, he Ted Nugent's that. an awesome guy. I hope he runs for president. Actually, I know Ted. And uh, he is an interesting guy. Very interesting, for sure. <laughs> I'd love to know what he thinks about the subject of Bigfoot. I'm, I'm real curious about that. You know, I've never He's seen a, him say anything about it. 
he's a big time outdoorsman. I'll tell you, he he really lives a life. So, but you know, knowing he's Ted, more he only, than the, right. The only thing with Ted is he eats what he kills. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you'd have a Bigfoot burger, which would be like Sony, Sony's Big Boy. It would be Shoney's Bigfoot, you know. And I'm sure Ted would enjoy it. It would be a very rare meat. But, I mean, one thing that Ted does, he will not kill anything unless he eats it. So That'd he be the most respects the food. burger in history. <laughs> it probably would be. Now, I've got a question, too. Did you see the two pictures that were taken, I think, in Virginia by tourists that shows these two giant uh, hairy creatures walking through the wood? And I'm not talking about like six foot four. I mean, taller, bigger. And it was on AOL. And I looked at that picture and I thought, wow, that looks <laughs> very authentic. Have you seen them? I haven't. I think I've seen talking about it. They, they look um, kind of iffy to me. There are other things I look for. Um, I'm, my jury's still out on those. Right. Well, I'm sure it'd have to be because down where William lives, there was a couple of guys who said they had captured a, a Bigfoot and it had a Bigfoot costume and some raw meat and put it in a freezer. And yeah. people were coming down to see it. So, you know, basically, to me, the more fake you have, the harder it is to convince people it's real. What do you think? Yeah. I think that's right. The more that that kind of stuff goes on, uh, people that are already skeptical about it, it just kind of feeds their feeds their opinion, you know. Yeah, I know, I saw um, yesterday there were um, three different stories. There were three different Bigfoot stories on AOL News and Yahoo News. Three different stories, and all three of them were just. They were very silly stories. Yeah. And, right. and, and so I was just thinking to myself that, you know, once, once or twice a year this happens. You know, once or, once or twice a year we have this, you know, uh, you know they go to the Bigfoot file right. and, and they get a couple of days out of that. And every time that happens, it 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 undermines all of the work that you know people you know like you guys you know the work that you guys do and the other people out there who are doing legitimate work and investigations and so i just wanted to get you guys to comment on that well, yeah yeah uh, it's a tragedy <laughs> yeah it's 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 pretty it's pretty devastating for the most part mm. so, um, anyway it's when um, it's when things like that happen you mentioned um, down near where, where you live, William, uh, about uh -huh. the uh, folks in the freezer. Uh, that same gentleman is currently claiming to have killed a Bigfoot in Texas. And You're kidding. A lot of, uh, yeah, Rick Dyer. Look up Rick Dyer. Uh, his name is uh, Rick, D-Y-E-R. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been going on with this story for the past several months. Uh, an actual movie was made called Shooting Bigfoot. It was made by a gentleman named... Um, Morgan Matthews from Great Britain, who uh, come over and made a movie about Bigfoot hunters, and um, yeah, Rick Dyer claims to have a dead Sasquatch somewhere out in Las Vegas, and he's now, not. Now, wait, sure. now, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait! 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 So, this same guy, the same gentleman that did the freezer hoax. Yes. Now, this was in the summer of two thousand eight. Yes, sir. Uh, in 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 Atlanta. Yes. And so you're saying this same guy yes. is just out out west somewhere making the same claims? Yes. Yes, he is. He's been making this claim for over eight months, I believe, at least six months. And he's got a lot of people on board. He's got a lot of people who are believing everything he says. Uh, once again, uh, I will say <laughs> if you fool me once, shame on you. If you fool me twice, shame on me. Right. I will not believe. So I see it, and it, again, this is something that's been going on for quite a while, and this gentleman, I don't know whether to trust him. He, he's done some underhanded things in the past, and that ought to be a lesson to most of us. Okay, I've got a question, because, uh, you know, George Norrie is a really good friend of mine. Been on his show so many times, and, uh, and loved doing the show, and he's very personable to everybody. The only time I have ever seen him angry 
is when you had, I forget the guy's name, I hope it's not the same one, who actually had video cameras set up where you could put in a credit card and you could observe Bigfoot in captivity. <laughs> and all these people were doing their master cards and visas. And, you know, and George had, had the guy on the show. Now, if George is on the show, you're on coast to coast, you got 20 million listeners, you know? All right. Now, they conservatively say 6 million, but, you know, they know better. And it's a worldwide market. So you can imagine how much money was coming in. Well, when it turned out to be questionable, let's say that, George hit the roof. He had that guy on and he told him that he expected 100% refunds to everyone. Oh, yeah. And uh, the guy did. And, of course, the guy was never again on Coast to Coast. And that's the maddest I've ever seen George Norrie. Yeah, there's several people involved in this uh, research that basically are in it just for the sole purpose of trying to gain, you know, fame or fortune, whatever you want to call it. And, and there's unscrupulous people in everything, but it's it's really sad when, you know, it's it's almost like the televangelists, you know, they, they sucker people into sending them money and, you know, it isn't, it isn't doing any good except for enriching the people that are, you know, per perpetrating the uh, scam, you know, it's, it, it does kind of make all of us look bad collectively, in my opinion. Well, exactly right. Now, well, I, uh, go ahead, William. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I was going to say, but you know, when you, when you get into a conversation uh, with a, a layman, you know, somebody who's not familiar with, you know, cryptozoology or what have you, and you start talking about Bigfoot, well, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, oh, yeah, I heard about the guys who faked it, and I heard about mm -hmm. the guys who hoaxed it, and I heard about this. And so you see what I'm saying? And so it's kind of permeating everything, and yeah. uh, you, can't, you can't have a conversation. It's very hard right now to help educate people, help give people some information, because their only exposure is through the hoaxes. Right. It's a crying shame. It really is. Um, you know, you were talking about the picture that I think one of you guys said was maybe taken back in the 70s, and I think what you're probably talking about is the Patterson Gimlin film. Yeah. And there, there's so much uh, new video because of YouTube and really the internet in general. There's There's been uh, so much uh, press about everything. That, that particular piece of footage was actually taken in 1967 by a man named Roger Patterson, and he had another gentleman with him named Bob Gimlin. There's been over a million dollars spent trying to debunk that Ooh. video, and every time they just make the case stronger, it was it's impossible to hoax that, especially for two guys with no budget. They actually went to Disney and, and asked them if they could do it, and they said there's no way to do it without computers. And they went to John Chambers, who did the masks and all the makeup for the Planet of the Apes, which came out the same year, and he said, I'm not that good. Uh, even even on his deathbed, he, he denied he had anything to do with it. So um, I always stick to the to the foundational things of my uh, belief in it, and the patterson Gimlin film was like uh, solid as a rock. Nowadays, they can't even duplicate it. Nobody can come up with a suit. I mean, uh, so... I, I try to stick with the stuff that I know, and a lot of the stuff that's new and out, and you got a lot of kids just trying to pull pranks and whatnot, and then there are people that are trying to make a, a living off of uh, people that don't know any better, but uh, it's it's a lousy deal for everybody. Well, it seems like the negativity seems to always shine through, obviously, more. It's just like that in the paranormal. You know, you have these people out there that act like idiots, and... It do a lot of stupid things that people seem to pick up on that more than anything else. But I agree. But for you guys, I mean, how often do you hear, do you get somebody to contact you or get a report, or how exactly does that work with your organization? Say if I've got a Bigfoot or something and I call you guys, I mean, do you get a lot of reports where people are contacting you saying, can you come out and check this out? Or I mean, how exactly does that work since y'all been doing this? That is pretty much how it works. Uh, I don't uh, send people out on wild goose chases. I don't uh, we don't do a whole lot of public expedition kind of things. We wait, basically, is what we do. We simply wait. And when the news comes, we do everything in our power 
to have someone available to go and check the area. I had a gentleman uh, who was a member of the organization go to a, an area called South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, down along the Alabama border this past weekend and check out a, a report. And, um, uh, Gary, it would be really interesting to you. Uh, back on July 4th, a young lady in Oliver Springs had a sighting on Mahoney Road. Mm. Right from uh, the Baptist Church there, a daylight sighting. Uh, I went to the location and found a 16-inch footprint. Wow. So, I wear a size 13 shoe. My bare foot with measuring tape is 10 inches long. So, this this footprint that I found was 16 inches long. Uh, You can see that photograph on the website. And okay. um, it's it's incredible. I, I would love to any anyone that does not believe in Sasquatch, does not believe in Bigfoot, I would love to take them with me when it happens. Because again, like I say, I don't make it up as I go. We try our best not to um, make it happen. If you understand what I'm saying, we oh, yeah. and that way it's authentic. If somebody contacts us and we go and search. Actually, had a phone call this past weekend of a gentleman who was uh, food hunting, and found that there were basketball-sized rocks coming off the cliff above him, God. being thro- not not rolling off, but being thrown with an arc off the cliff yeah. for him. And um, you know, that's I, I, yeah, sure. There there could have been some kids up there doing some crazy things on him and, and all like that. But his dogs ran. Off went back to the truck and would not stay with him. And that usually um, is, you know, that's one of those things that people say is a sure sign that if Sasquatch is in the area, dogs want no part of them. Hmm. You know, this stuff is on all over the country, and you just don't hear about it. People are people are afraid to say anything about it because they'll be ridiculed. Uh, they yeah. they might be uh, per- persecuted for their on their job. Um, they they don't want people to know what they've seen. They try to keep quiet. And, and one of the things that we try to do as an organization is, is guarantee their privacy. But at the same time, we definitely love for them to tell us what they've seen so we can investigate it. And at the very least, try to get a better understanding of their behavior, of Sasquatch behavior, and, and possibly where they are moving and, 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 and traveling. That way we can, you know, maybe have a good idea of maybe where to actually go and look. You know, I wanted to ask you guys, um, I've seen, you know, I see from time to time, you know, you have an anthropologist or a biologist, and I've seen them comment on the fact that not only, it's not that they just don't believe that this creature can exist, but there's a kind of, there's a kind of arrogance and almost condescension in their feeling about this it's it's almost like you know there's very little in the world that you can be sure about but they approach this with such a degree of certainty that this thing just cannot be real and i wonder where that comes from Um, well i think i can probably answer that question pretty well okay um they've been trained by other professors for the most part that have told them that it's not possible and the reason is most of the great apes, uh, you, the great apes, you know, you, you've got a, a pretty small select group of animals. You've got chimpanzees, there's several varieties. You've got mountain gorillas, lowland gorillas. You've got orangutans, and and uh, a few a few that nobody's ever heard of. They're all quadrupeds. They walk on their knuckles. And right. so, if you look at the there, there's a there's a chain that they've used for years in science to show the progression of man as they've evolved according to their theory and the you know man evolved from apes and because of the, the shape of the foot mostly of the sasquatch reports that come in they say that it's not possible because it's bipedal it walks upright like man uh-huh. even though they tell you there's a missing link in their theory of, of evolution uh, personally i think uh they i think that there are some some scientists that uh, that know that it is real. I think that there's some government agencies that know that it's real, and I think right. the reason that they uh, 
disregarded or, or, or the arrogance that you're talking about is put out is because uh, it really messes with their theory of evolution. Uh, I, I don't believe in the theory of evolution. I think uh, I, I believe in creation. So, um, you know, there is no missing link in, in what I believe in. And okay. so you would think that if they knew, they would be all over trying to say, well, here's the missing link, whatever, whatever. Uh, really, I think that, uh, that they're just, they don't, they don't want it to exist or they don't want people to believe it exists because it, it really flies all over everything they teach. Right. Uh, because it, it, there is a difference between the other great apes and this animal, which I believe to be a, a great ape, just, a, just an upright walking one. No big deal to me. So maybe in, in, in one context, somebody might interpret Bigfoot as a potential missing link. And Possibly. You know, they don't want to deal with that because, like you said, you have to go back in and you have to you know, change all the textbooks and rewrite all the history books and re-educate the anthropologists and the paleontologists and what have you. Uh, and and then another thing too is you know how it is I think it's like UFOs and other things you know after after a certain period of time has gone by you know you've got you know uh, these people have almost 50 years invested in insisting that this thing can't be real and so it's very difficult even in the face of some compelling evidence to say, oh, well, you know what? We've been wrong for the last five decades. <laughs> you know? That's exactly, the, right. exactly. It's, to me, it's almost pride in its most base form. Um, you know, there's, there's a, it's pretty well documented. They found a tribe of people living in Mindanao in the Philippines in 1965 that was previously unknown. They're extremely primitive people. They actually, they just found another tribe uh, way up the Amazon that they were uh, unaware of. You know, they, they discover, they say, we know more about the surface of the moon than we do the deep ocean. And where I'm going with all this is they keep discovering new things that they didn't know about, plants, bugs, different kind of uh, sea creatures and this kind of thing. So I, I just don't, uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I just, uh, right. the coelacanth, for example, they said it was extinct so many million years ago and, and they've, they've caught several of them here in the last hundred years and so uh, the arrogance that thinks just comes from they just they just refuse to believe it's real right. until you take them up something but, but see, like that. when it comes to when it comes to bigfoot now of course now when i say bigfoot you know i really mean you know the like the yeti uh -huh. you know all of these mystery hominids you know skunk ape you know all of these yep. uh when it comes to these issues when it comes to issues like flying saucers, when it comes to issues like ghosts, see, they've dug in. So this is not, this is different than discovering that the coelacanth is still alive, okay? That's just kind of like, oh, wow, uh, isn't that interesting? But see, over here with these other subjects, they've dug in. Yeah, I think they've, you're right about dug that. In. And they've, and they've, and they've, you know, they've dug trenches and, and it's like these guys and those guys and us, us versus them. And so, you know, it's not just about the evidence. It's about, it's, it's philosophical. It's about right. a particular worldview. And of course, in today's world, what you absolutely cannot do is say, I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, people don't want to admit when they're wrong, especially when they have tenure at a university and it could mean their job or they feel like, you know, the, the uh, say the, the board of trustees at a university will chastise anybody that says anything, then they could lose tenure. They don't want to lose their job. They're not willing to take risks. I keep saying that in a very broad uh, manner. There are some mainstream scientists and, and professors in universities who have actually been involved in, in uh, Bigfoot research and really have because of their uh, status, they're able to get some backing from, uh, say, major, you know, uh, television producing companies like, you know, the History Channel did that series Monster Quest, and, and uh, there's so much evidence out there that I think that the average 
scientist is pretty quick to jump on and go, oh, that's not possible. But they, they aren't aware of the fact that there's already got DNA, they've already got blood, they've already got scat, they've already got hair, they've got footprints that the FBI's number one uh, fingerprint examiner, uh, you know, who set out trying to debunk it, actually reversed himself and said, you know, I was wrong, this is a real animal. He's willing to stake his reputation on it. And, you know, his testimony puts people in jail. So um, a lot of these people, they haven't spent any time just being objective and listening to the evidence that is available, and they won't budge on it. It's just a matter of they're, uh, they're just not open-minded, you know. Well, um, I, I, want you to, I want you to expand or expound on this because you brought up this guy who was this fingerprint expert, and I'm glad you brought this up. And this is a good piece of information for any listener out there who may be predisposed to think that this is all nonsense. Uh, but when I heard about this, uh, this issue of dermal ridges, when I heard about this, this piece of information convinced me that there was something to the Bigfoot question. And it, can you talk about that for just a few minutes? Sure, yeah, this man's name is Jimmy Chilcutt. He, he's been featured on uh, the History Channel uh, series Monster Quest, and he's been on some other uh, things, too. He actually wanted to put the question to rest. He's one of the only fingerprint experts in the world who's actually taken the time to hand and footprint all of the great apes, all every species of primate, basically, and he's become something of an authority on it. So uh, there's a professor up in Idaho, uh, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who has about 2,000 track castings of um, different Sasquatch prints from all over, really, all over the United States and, and some from foreign countries. So uh, Jimmy Chilcutt decided he was going to go up and um, look at these track castings and prove once and for all that it wasn't possible that these animals were real. And after he, he got up there and started looking at some of the samples, it actually it actually changed his mind, and he, he came on board as a person that, that uh, you know, he'll just tell you categorically that the animal's real because it's, it's impossible. Um, the great apes have, <clears throat> just, just like uh, the little lines and ridges in our fingerprints are called dermal ridges, uh, the great apes have a different pattern to theirs, and, and like on their foot, the lines where ours run crossways, theirs run longitudinally, and they're about twice as wide as as human dermal ridges are. And so after having the knowledge that he already had from the other graves, when he looked at these, he realized, wow, this is a real animal because the way the tracks are made, you know, there are people that have made wooden uh, apparatus to go on their feet and they on their shoes and they've jumped around out in the woods and the snow and mud. And it's pretty easy, actually, for anybody that knows anything about uh, tracking to pick out those ones because they're completely static. They don't have any, any give to them. These footprints that he's looking at, he actually had two samples of the same animal that were taken 20 years apart and over 800 miles apart because the little uh, distinct characteristics of each footprint were, say, of course, you know, the animal's walking barefoot out in the woods. Once in a while, it's going to step on a sharp rock. It's going to cause a, a wound. And then, then when that thing heals, the, the little lines turn in towards the wound, and he... he uh, examine that and then and it, it really changed his outlook because here he's been trained by you know other scientists and professors to have his view and and when he looked at these castings he realized that this is uh a, a foot that is uh flexing as it steps down and moves and, and it now, made a believer out of it wasn't this gentleman um former fbi or former cia some former agency yeah yeah, he works in uh, Conroe, Texas, for the police department there. But he's uh, such uh, an authority on fingerprints. He's the FBI lead examiner for so, for fingerprints. So let me get this straight. Now, this gentleman not only is an a fingerprint expert, but he's a he's an expert on primate rid Correct. dermal ridges. So this is. This, is, this is this is this is what amazes me. So if you have a man like this who is starting out this process to debunk the whole thing. And he looks at it based on his expertise, a man whose expertise can convict people and who, you know, that has convicted people. And he comes to the conclusion, this is being made by a real animal. 
he even was uh, bold enough to say that he would stake his reputation on it on national TV. Right. So, you know, that's, so, that's a pretty bold you, move for somebody if, that, you know, is risking his career. Exactly. So if you are an intellectually honest person and you're listening to that piece of information and you, and you come away saying, I don't buy it, then what that means to me is that there's nothing that's going to convince you unless there's a Bigfoot knocking on your door selling Avon. Yeah, exactly. But science wants a body to dissect. Uh, they did the same thing, uh, you know, when, when Darwin made his... Uh, his. I heard you laughing, uh, Stephen. <laughs> he, he, yeah, uh, for Bigfoot example, I'll just tell you, same you William, back yeah. in the day, uh, they brought a duck-billed platypus to the, to the British... Uh, you know, Museum of, I don't know, Natural History at the time. This is this is way back. Uh -huh. They said that is the work of a clever uh, Chinese taxidermist. Get that thing out of here. It's not a real animal. <laughs> so this isn't, you know, this is this has been going on for years and years and years. Uh, science won't really come on board until you give them a body to examine. I, I keep saying science. There are some scientists that have that have really been involved in this, and I'm really thankful for their input because they know a lot more about, you know, things that I don't know anything about. Um, they, they, they can offer, you know, their opinion about, you know, technical terms that don't I don't even understand, so well, I don't want to name any names necessarily, but, it, well, you know, if, if, if you've watched a, any of the stuff, you've seen them. If we had a Bigfoot body, though, here's what's interesting. If we had a Bigfoot body, uh, the thing that, that I'm most interested in is looking at its DNA. You know, I, I know that its anatomy and its physiology is fascinating and we'll learn a lot there. But I'm very interested in what its DNA is going to tell us because, see, that's where the real meat and potatoes of this is. Okay? Sure. And that's going to tell us where this creature fits in the big scheme of things. And I think that's the that's the thing that everybody's worried about you see yeah i agree with you the, the uh, we have basically 97 percent of the same dna as chimpanzees and and again you know you would think that they would jump in and try to help out and say you know because you can get grants for research uh if you're if you're connected to the right people or you write a good enough uh you know explanation of why you need the money i guess and uh the, the DNA that they have gotten, they keep, they keep the scientists that look at it say it's inconclusive because it's really similar to human DNA. Uh, you know, just a, just a few little things different, really. And, and honestly, you know, when you look at a, at a chimp, even when they're just uh, young, you know, we, we have a lot of the really, you know, the same features, the shape of the ears really close, right. you know. I mean, they're, so it's no big surprise to me that the... Uh, you know, the well, DNA they, when, is so close on it. Well, but when they have the Bigfoot DNA, and I mean, let's let's tell the truth here. When they have the Bigfoot DNA and they come out and they say it's inconclusive, that's a code word for no comment. Right. Yeah. It's it's it flies in the face of what they believe, and so they don't want to support it or, or be positive about it. Um, they right. even Monster Quest again. They had a, they had a guy in there that that looked at it and said, "Oh, you know, it's." It's human DNA, you know, this has been contaminated or, or whatever. They want to try to explain it away, but I think it, uh, I think it's going to make them look bad and they just don't want to admit but it, then, basically. I would have to say this, too. It, it just occurred to me, you know, when they, when they run these tests, these genetic tests, um, they have a very large database. Uh, uh, by which or to which they can compare various samples. And so I imagine at any of these universities, any of these labs, I, I imagine that Bigfoot DNA is not in their database, you know? And so right. the, only, the only result they could get would be unknown. Yeah, okay. and that's what they keep coming back with. They'll say, um, you take them from hair... And uh, human hair has a, a, a root inside of it. It's called a medulla. Ape hair doesn't. So the, what they'll say is, well, this is unknown primate hair. And so basically they're not saying it's something new. They're just saying 
unknown. I, you know, in other words, they kind of leave you hanging. It could be chimp, it could be gorilla, it could be a rang. They just they won't say. Well, you know, this is well. I mean, but but see, here's the thing: Un, unknown primate hair is good enough because there's no orangutans in California. Right. <laughs> you know, or, or or you know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, there's no oh, gorillas sure. in Canada. Right. You know, and so, uh, it, it, yeah, and, and so, yeah, a lot of this, a lot of this, you know, steps over from the scientific world into the philosophical world. And, and, and you know, we're, we're talking about, again, Bigfoot, flying saucers, whatever. You can talk about leprechauns, but it all talks about what your worldview is. And this is going to challenge, I think, no matter, no matter where you are philosophically, this is going to challenge your worldview when we find out what this thing is. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah, definitely so. Definitely so, guys. But we're going to go ahead and run to this top of the hour break. Take it as kind of the extended break, everyone. But you are listening to Man, Myths, and Monsters here tonight. Special guests on the line with us, Matt Sieber and Ron L- Losey, or Losey. Ron, how do you pronounce your last name? Tell me again. It's Losey. That's close Losey. Enough. I asked William this for the show, and I was still screwing it up. But uh, any uh, of the East Tennessee Bigfoot organization, you can check them out at East Tennessee. Spell out the word Tennessee, Bigfoot.org. We're going to run to this top of the hour break, but you were listening to Man, Myths, and Monsters with Dr. William Lister right here on the Pop Odyssey Radio Network and the digi- WHVR Digital Broadcasting Network. Stay tuned, everyone. Many sights to see And when I look in my window So many different people to be That it's strange So strange Three minutes past the hour and you're listening to Man, Myths, and Monsters tonight. Dr. William Lester right here on the Pop Odyssey Radio Network and the WHVR Digital Broadcasting Network. We've got a couple really great guests here with us tonight. We're talking about Bigfoot, Sasquatch. I think we're going to get into some kind of uh, Bigfoot genome project thing here that uh, William is wanting to bring up here in just a little bit. But uh, Matt Sieber and Ron... Uh, Ron, tell me your name. Losey. <laughs> oh, man. I, am I in terrible with names? Of the East Tennessee Bigfoot Research Organization. You can check them out at EastTennesseeBigfoot.org. All kinds of great things. And... Uh, Gentlemen, I know I keep referring back to this. We played this commercial again just a moment ago. But tell me what the probability is of somebody going out and actually being able to capture a Bigfoot. I mean, is that, do you think that's feasible? Something that, you, do you really think it's realistic to think somebody could go out and somehow set up a gigantic cage and be able to capture one of these? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on this? I don't believe it. It's been tried, actually. <laughs> There's, there's a Bigfoot trap up in the Oregon Mountains, and it was totally unsuccessful. I, I doubt very seriously anybody will ever be able to do it, but I, I want to let Matt throw in his two cents worth here. I, I don't. Again, I don't. I don't think it's possible. I don't think there's any way possible. Um, simply because there's not enough manpower, not enough money, not enough effort, for the most part, being even put into this this kind of endeavor. Uh, first, you have to kind of think that it's an animal a dumb animal and this is not a dumb animal by any stretch of the imagination it's it's eluded humans for hundreds of years uh, it's it's hiding in plain sight it is all around us it's everywhere and nowhere at the same time and I don't mean that in a meta metaphysical kind of way Dr. Lester I'm just saying that uh, these creatures know how to hide <laughs> and they hide for a good reason they don't like us they don't want any part of us and I can guarantee you if you're within a hundred yards of one of these things, it's going to know it long before you ever even know it exists. I don't believe it's possible that anyone or any group, possibly the U.S. Army, someone like that with that kind of background, that kind of equipment, that kind of clout, maybe uh, an organization with that kind of uh, ability would be able to do something similar, but I don't believe there's anyone out there right now that could do such a thing. Or bring somebody in that, uh, you know, maybe is a little smarter than these creatures, you know, or maybe 
the mind power of caging one of them somehow, you know, versus bringing in like the whole military or whatever. I mean, hell, Gary's an intelligent guy. I mean, I'm up for, you know, putting him in some camouflage fatigues and seeing what he could come up with, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, it's a really good point, though. I mean, it's, you know, and that might be the very reason why nobody's ever been able to do this, you know, aside from hey, these. I'll tell you, apes are very spooky creatures, and uh, Dr. Jane Goodall spent two months surrounded by chimpanzees before they trusted her enough to let them see her, to, to, to let her see them is what I should have said. And I think it's going to be the same with, uh, you know, if you, if you know where uh, a group of Sasquatches are dwelling at or, you know, where, where one has been around, you'd be hard-pressed to, uh, it, it would take a long time before I think that, uh, you know, you develop that same kind of a thing. Now, see, back he was in baiting chimps with uh, bananas, and you know right. bananas are from South America. They never saw a banana until she took them over there. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I mean, I've watched documentaries on Jane Goodall and read a little bit about her and all that. But uh, interesting stuff. Now, when we did this back in July and we put that challenge out there, we actually had an interested party that called in. And Gary, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm wanting to say we brought him on for a show or. He called in during one of the well, shows and we discussed it? or Actually, yeah, we brought him on for half a show with the guy who made the challenge, and they talked it out. He he said he had some sounds and some pictures, and he was going to send them in, and we saw him. What did you think? Uh, uh, a little skeptical. I mean, it's this this guy, gentleman, claimed that he thought, you know, of course there's no guarantees on He didn't lay any kind of guarantee down. But he felt, uh, I guess, semi-confident that he could actually capture one. He was somewhere up in Ohio. But, uh, you know, and getting to that, you know, we're, like location, I mean, where are the areas, are they, do these things go in like families or packs? Or, and they are they strewn out all across the U.S. and other countries? Or are they zoned in and primarily located in specific areas? I mean, what have you, from your research, I mean, what have you picked up on that? Well, there's a, there are a couple of uh, maps on our East Tennessee Bigfoot Facebook page that someone else, uh, some professors, some, some people in the know have uh, developed over the past few years that shows sighting areas, sighting locations by state, by county, by town. And um, anywhere where there is a lot of cover and a lot of water, uh, the east and west coast are both riddled with sightings, and uh, when you get out into the Midwest, into the flatlands of Kansas and places like that, um, there's not as much going on out there. And I believe that's simply because there's not as much, not as much hiding, and there's not as much water available to them. Uh, here in East Tennessee, again, you know, there's plenty of mountains, plenty of places to hide, lots of water, lots of food. Uh, and again, I think they travel. I don't think they're necessarily migratory. Uh, who knows? Uh, we really don't know. But uh, I believe they do travel where the food sources take them. So, you know, we, we talked about uh, the, the possibility or the feasibility of capture, uh, and it's relatively low. Uh, and you, you actually listed the, the main things that that I would suspect. Um, I, I still have this kind of hunch or this kind of feeling that somewhere at some point this is going to come down to a hunter uh, just, you know, aiming and shooting. And I, I it's almost, if you think about it, it's almost inevitable. Uh, and and I'm not talking about a hoax situation. Well, we have we have two such incidents supposedly that have happened within the past year. Okay. That have uh, in the Bigfoot world they have uh, been been all, all over the Bigfoot world news. And one of those I'd mentioned before being Rick Dyer, who claims to kill the Bigfoot behind a a, a large uh, retailer's warehouse uh, near um, I believe it was Austin, Texas. Um, and then there's a fellow by the name of Justin Smaja who lives up in Washington State who claims to have killed a Sasquatch. And um, 
again, I believe that that was actually there was a TV show here on recently that actually um, told his story, mm-hmm. and supposedly some of the tissue from that kill was used in the Sasquatch Genome Project that has been in the news here lately. So what did they, I mean, what did they do, these claims that they shot him? I mean, I know you said there's one supposedly in Nevada somewhere, but do they not have, like, photographs or videos of the the body or the carcass or however you want to describe it after they, they shot are not, it? Or? They are not releasing those things. They, again, this is where the questions come in. Oh, sure. When it starts looking like something to make money, uh, when it becomes something... Um, just to tease people. Um, like I say, this gentleman, Rick Dyer, he's been talking about having this body on ice, uh, having this body in, in a semi dissected state by scientists. Oh, and yes, actually has it in a cold room and it's it's being preserved. It's had some scientific data and tests run, and, but he's not released any photographs. Uh, one of his big proponents is uh, a fellow by the name of. Um, Oh, good grief. I can't even remember the fellow's name. But he was, he's supposedly a very well-known skeptic whom I actually never heard of until about six months ago, who all of a sudden was this world-renowned skeptic of Bigfoot. <laughs> Everything just seems to have just fell into place so easily. And I honestly believe that Rick Dyer is trying to make people like myself look stupid once again, like he did in 2008, when so many... Bigfoot right. research jumped on the bandwagon of this this carcass in the freezer. Yeah, that well, turned out to be Yeah, well, of course. I mean, and this guy is. I mean, if if this guy is obviously a clown. Um, but here's the thing: if you had a Bigfoot corpse, right? Just, I mean, just let's just imagine for a second, hypothetically, you had a real, actual, legitimate bona fide Bigfoot corpse. All right. So you have, you can take photos, you know, a million different ways, you know, photos, yeah. videos, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but here's the difference. Here's what I'm saying. You don't have to tease people because don't you understand if you actually have that body, that right. there's lots of ways for you to make money. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Smithsonian has had a standing offer for years of five million dollars for a carcass, and, and exactly. recently I heard from somebody that it's that it's actually over ten million. Sure. And uh, you know, uh, going back to the thing about about capturing one, uh, I, I keep bringing up Jane Goodall. Just she she also believes that Bigfoot is a real animal and that it's a great ape. She actually uh, had to raise her son in a cage. She she put her son in a cage to protect him from those animals when she was over there. So um, I think these animals are going to be way too smart to climb into any kind of a trap. And I'm like you, uh, Dr. Lester. I think that eventually, if, if it does happen, it's going to be because a hunter has shot one. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just going to be one of them right place, right time things. Um, I, I don't think that anybody's ever going to capture one because I don't think you can get close enough to one. When you think about wild animals and their instincts, if all you saw a man doing was destroying things, for example, taking bulldozers and making roads, shooting deer, and then and then you know dismembering them out in the woods, you know uh, blowing things up with explosives. I mean, cutting trees down. You would probably want to stay as far away from them as you could if you were a, a wild animal. And and uh, I just don't think one's ever going to be taken alive. It would be it would be a miracle to me that if that ever happened. Well, that's why I think the capture versus kill debate is really almost a moot point because we're not going to catch one. You're just, you're just yeah, not going to catch uh, one. Yeah. Extremely powerful, strong, you know, they can move quickly. I just, I don't believe it's possible personally. Yeah. So um, now, you know, we've alluded to this and uh, I have been, Reading about this, it seems like forever, but it can't be. But I've been reading about this Sasquatch genome project, which was supposedly this ongoing study that was supposed to establish the reality of Bigfoot through genetic research, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
and I've been reading about this and you know you know back and forth one side of the other and just last week uh, they had some kind of press conference somewhere in Texas maybe Dallas or somewhere and they released a a video uh, of what was supposedly Bigfoot in the wild and I watched the video and I watched the press conference and uh, for me uh, neither of them were uh, very encouraging so uh, I'd, I'd love for you guys to comment on your feelings your ideas on this Sasquatch genome project I saw some photographs several months ago and I believe that these are the same photographs part of the videos that you yourself are alluding to uh, about uh -huh. Matilda they named her Matilda and uh, supposedly it's a female Sasquatch that they have on video and she's sleeping on the ground at, at one occasion and then uh, the other one she actually in the video is looking at the camera uh -huh. and Dr. Lester I'll just be completely honest with you I have I have talked to people on both sides of the coin of this debate I've talked to people who I trust very much with what they know and what they understand as Bigfoot and they say that it is very possible that Matilda is very real. Uh -huh. Then I speak to other folks who say there's no way Bigfoot does not look like this. I, I know a gentleman personally, I spoke with him last night at length about what he saw. And he saw what did not at all look like this Matilda character in this video. And okay. I'll be completely honest with both of you, or, or all four of you guys, that um, I see a Wookiee. I see a Wookiee. I see Star Wars when I see that video. <laughs> and that being said, That's that being said, it's very possible <laughs> that someone has bought a Wookiee suit, uh, put on a video, and tried to make claims that it is, Sa it is Sasquatch. Um, as far as the DNA... I, again, I've spoken to people who, who I have a great deal of respect for who have actually submitted DNA samples to the Sasquatch Genome Project. I think that these DNA samples are very valid. The science is, is very solid. Uh, then again, I speak to others who claim that it's all just a big hoax. Uh -huh. And the thing is, when you throw this video in with the DNA evidence, it loses credibility for me. Right. I cannot right. act at this point. If, if, it, if it turns out that, indeed, there is a type of Sasquatch, Bigfoot creature, that looks like a Wookiee, then we'll know that George Lucas had an encounter at some point in his life. Well, see, that's, just, yeah, see that's the thing, because, I, listen, I mean, there's two things here that bother me. You know, we just got through talking about how you're not going to get close up to a Bigfoot. Right. But they have a video, a close-up video of a Bigfoot sleeping on the ground. Okay? That, and then... It looks like an old 1960s shag carpet. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, then we have a, a facial... We have a facial video. And here's the thing. You know, now... If you're going to hoax something, and you use the image of a very recognizable science fiction icon. That's wow. what a Chewbacca is. Yeah. You are galactically stupid. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No doubt about it. Anytime these videos start out with the camera pointing in a direction and, and uh, all of a sudden something's moving, I'm really suspect of them. And I... I I've kind of gotten really cynical over the last couple of years. You know what a Rorschach test is? To me, when people are showing you a video and they're having to draw circles in it so you can see what they think they're seeing, <laughs> there's a problem with it. Why, you know, Bigfoot isn't just going to come out and go get their portrait made at Olin Mills either. You know, given the, the, the terrain around here, the underbrush, it's a jungle here. You know, it's, it's almost subtropic, and it's really difficult to get clear pictures but now we can get pictures all kinds of videos on people's cell phones of black bears and 
and deer and everything. So these people that are that are claiming to have these encounters and they're they're giving gifts back and forth and you know I I, I it, for me it's like I'm going okay you know that's great for you but I don't see anything that you're seeing and and uh, you can try to convince me all you want to but I need some you know look at the Patterson footage. Uh, I think I can even explain how the Patterson footage happened, if you want my theory on it. The, the animal was oh, yeah. down at the creek getting a drink, and the water was rushing by making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Two guys ride up on horse. Deer are used to used to hearing uh, elk, and, and uh, Bigfoot is used to, to hearing uh, probably deer and elk walk up on four feet. Probably couldn't hear it over the river when, when she looked up and seen them. She just got up, turned around, and walked away. Uh, that sounds pretty plausible to me. You know, I don't think I'm reaching too far. The old grainy 16 millimeter footage, but it's so much better than a lot of the stuff that's come out in the last even couple of years with much better quality cameras. Mm -hmm. You know, my cell phone has probably got a better uh, camera in it than what they used to shoot that footage. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, what are the what? Are, and and I want to talk about the Patterson film a little bit uh, later. Um, what what are the odds with this genome thing that the that the DNA work is good and the video stuff is garbage? Uh, There's a possibility. And, I mean, I'm open minded yeah. to it. I don't want to shoot anybody down, but I think that the whole thing has to do 100 percent with Bigfoot politics. Um, the people that are involved in that project are um, on the side of Bigfoot being uh, human. And that's to me seems to be their agenda. Is that they, they all keep trying to say that this is a, a form of early man or feral humans or whatever. And I, so I think there's an agenda behind it. Uh -huh. I don't know exactly what it is, but that's my opinion. So it, see, that's interesting because, in other words, instead of trying to figure out what it actually is. You're saying that they kind of have this preset or predetermined idea that they're, you know, and they, and they, you know how it is, you, you want you want to make the facts fit the theory. Right, exactly. That kind of thing. Um, and, and see, that's That's, that's exactly the opposite of what a police detective that's, will do. Yeah, that's not If he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, that's not good research. That's not good science. And, um, uh, you know, because, you know, I'm sitting here now just like you guys and i have two or three ideas about what bigfoot might be but uh if i find out tomorrow what it actually is one way or the other it's not gonna you know uh uh ruin my life <laughs> you know no i'll um, accept it if they can prove it to me yeah. i'll be glad to accept it and i'll step right up on a podium and say hey look i was wrong my theory my idea my Opinion was was uh, totally wrong, but I just don't believe that's going to happen. So right. I, I'm I'm fairly uh, dogmatic, if you want to say, in in the way that I believe, because you know you just uh, you just look at all the evidence objectively. I don't see how you can come to any other conclusion unless you're in that business and exactly. and you're trying to you know come up with. Uh, Police take the evidence and develop a theory. They don't take their theory and try to make the evidence fit it. And scientists shouldn't either. Yeah, because, I mean, I haven't looked at any DNA of anything, and, and, and I don't think I'm going to let anybody tell me that Bigfoot is human. Yeah, I, I don't know enough about <laughs> DNA to fill a thimble, but, uh, yeah. you know, you can you can listen to all the, all the reports from, throughout history, yeah. and uh, I, I don't know how you can... How you can come up with any other theory unless you just don't believe that or you don't want to believe that yeah you know you're wrong about it yeah and so that, that's uh yeah i'm very interested in that and um that is the that's a kind of a news story that's been going for about a week and a half now and uh i'm very interested in how that's going to turn out because like i said we went through that thing in 2008 you guys are saying that this same kook is out in Texas. This Dyer character is out there trying to pull off the same thing. So, um, uh, you know, I'm just wondering how many of these can we take um, before we have a real situation? Before before we can come out of it with some real evidence, some real information? Because the media is laughing. Oh yeah. 
Okay. I'll tell you, honestly, there was a story years ago on Art Bell. A guy named Bugs told a story about how he killed two of them. If I'm not mistaken, he was down in Texas or maybe Oklahoma, and he was... He sounded so apprehensive to talk about it. It was almost like he had committed murder and he was afraid he was going to be prosecuted for it. He said that he told a big story about how he had buried it. And keep in mind, I have the highest regard for Art Bell and George Nori. I love their show. Uh, if I could stay up later, I'd listen to it every night. Right. But uh, the whole the whole story on its face sounded just a whole lot like somebody who was trying to get attention for themselves and get you to you know to believe in it. They're, they're, especially with the internet has blown up in the last 10 or 15 years, and there's been a lot more stories, a lot more probably people trying to get a hand, attention and, and uh, whatnot, but, it, but it's really helped us out on a lot, too, um, because people are starting to come out of the woodwork with some of these TV shows that are going on. It's drawing them out, and it, it gives us more more things to go look at rather than just randomly walking down a a trail in a national forest somewhere and hoping to find a footprint, we got people saying, hey, man, there's something around my pond in my back 40 down here. Could you guys come down and take a look at it? You know, so it's it's kind of a uh, two-edged sword, I guess you would say. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, and I was, it, it's very hard now because, and I was talking with a friend of mine about um, finding Bigfoot, and I said, listen, if you had a Bigfoot corpse, all you have to do is call the media. And the other person said, well, they're not going to come. And I said, no, no, no. I said, if you call the media and say the word Bigfoot, they're coming. Okay. <laughs> yeah, probably uh, so. They're, they're, they're coming. W whether it's legitimate or not, because if it is legitimate, of course, it's a great story uh, and it'll fill up multiple news cycles. If it's not serious, then it's it's a great joke story. And look at these kooky, cryptozoologist right. people. And you know they're they're you know we have these crazy people out there who think that. I heard a guy say, <clears throat> I heard a um, one of these uh, syndicated radio guys say that he thought all this Bigfoot stuff was like mass hysteria. And I and I thought to myself. That's stupid because masses of people aren't seeing Bigfoot. Right. If you want to see mass hysteria, come up with a body of yeah. a Bigfoot and try to explain how you got it. Animal rights activists would probably burn your house down. I mean, somebody would be wanting to kidnap your kids. It, it, that would be a mass hysteria for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know how the Greenpeace are, people are out there trying to save the whales and and all that kind of business. I I would be uh, I'd keep it as quiet as I could, and and uh, n none of, nobody that I know is in this for the fame and fortune and, and money. Although you know uh, the money would be nice, uh, simply for the fact that it would allow us to you know we're we're a low budget just group of blue collar people that are trying to do what we can. But uh, some of the equipment that we would like to have, take like a thermal imaging camera, a cheap one that's thirty five thousand dollars. You know so. Yikes. Uh, well, I don't think there's anything wrong, you know, and see, that's a, you know, people, I think a lot of people are naive. I don't think there's anything wrong. You know, if I, if, and it sounds funny, you know, if I have a Bigfoot body in my basement, <laughs> you know, uh, or an, an alien or a piece of a flying saucer, what's wrong? If it's real and it's legitimate, what's wrong with me profiting off of that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, exactly. if I. If I'm not hoaxing, if I'm telling the truth, uh, what's wrong with that? You know, now I have a problem with hoaxers. I think we all do. Uh, and, and so that's one thing. But if it's real, why not? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I wouldn't do like uh, some of the some of the people have done. Um, I, I hate to name names, but uh, Tom Biscardi oh, was God. a guy that fell hook, line, and sinker for this guy down in Georgia. And uh, they, they suckered him out of $50,000. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they, they got in some trouble and they had to pay him back. It was a big fraud deal. But how many people have won the lottery and, and got to, uh, you know, to, li to live the life of their dreams uh, off of a $1 scratch-off ticket or a Powerball yeah. ticket, for that matter? So, you know, it's it's all relative, I guess. Yeah, and you know what was funny? Well, not funny, but, you know, uh, one of those guys, are, well, they both were working in law enforcement. Right. And I was like, wow. And so, you know, when, when they were found out, of course, they were both fired instantly. Yeah. 
from those jobs. That, that kind of gave them some instant uh, believability because they were involved in, in law enforcement. That's kind of where a lot of people were going. Well, gosh, the cops, you know, they must be telling the truth. Right. But uh, I don't. I don't know if you. I don't know if you saw the interview where one of the guys basically uh, revealed uh, that it was a big joke. But I saw this interview with this guy, and I remember feeling like my head was catching on fire. Um, yeah. And so the, 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 the reporter asked the guy, uh, uh, how could you stand up in front of so many people and, you know, uh, perpetrate this, this hoax? And here was his answer. Well, you know, if you were taken in, you should have known better because everybody knows Bigfoot isn't real. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I mean, I wanted to jump into the TV. Well, you know, uh, I hate, again, I feel like I'm dropping names here, but uh, the TV program Finding Bigfoot uh -huh. is uh, a reality show, and it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, to me, you know, this is my opinion. Please feel free to make it your own, but... Uh, every episode, right, right as they're going through a commercial break, they're fixing to unload some kind of a big, really big bombshell, and it winds up just being a coyote or a deer or somebody walking in their backyard. They've got this thermal imaging camera, and they, they sucker you. So reality TV has really kind of, you know, what, what, what he was talking about to me is, you know, well, people have reality programs, and it's, it's all, you know, they find out later on, storage wars, you know, oh, well, they actually putting, you know, treasures in these units and they just show you that they're getting it and it's all made up. It's just, it's entertainment, but it's not, you know, it's not real. Yeah, a lot of people I, were let down. Let me tell you, a lot of people wanted to slash their wrists when they came out because they well, yeah. were on the edge of their seat for months. I mean, they strung it along for a long time. Well, uh, yeah, and, 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 of course, the truth is, though, uh, you know, you're hoping that finally... Yeah. We can put this one to bed, right? Okay, um, and, and 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 I was too. I was hoping. I said, "Well, finally, maybe we got something because these guys got a body. It's in a freezer. That's a little strange, but I guess what else are you going to do with a body?" Uh, and I was hoping, well, and and then the thing, thing kind of unravel. Real quick, um, yeah. The yeah. thing about these hoaxers is that what it has done to me it's made me a skeptic. Sure. It, it makes me rethink everything that I think because when I hear a report of Bigfoot, I have to weigh out what people are telling me or what I'm reading or what I'm trying to understand about the story because just like the, uh, the Sasquatch Genome Project, that video doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. And when it doesn't fit, it makes me question the rest of the, the, the entire project. But... Right. Um, you know, for example, when I personally find a 16-inch track, I get very excited because I know that there's something real going on. Right. Um, I don't know anybody in East Tennessee that hoaxes this stuff. And how could they hoax this stuff and me just happen upon it? You know, here's the thing. So many people over the years have found tracks. 20 and 30 miles out into the in, into the forest, into, into the middle of nowhere, and somebody happens to find them. Who's going to go to the trouble of going 20 and 30 miles out into the middle of nowhere, faking tracks, and then leaving, and just hoping someone will find them? Uh, there's, 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 there's some sort of mislogic there when, when uh, the scientific community as a whole, or the skeptical community as a whole, tries to throw that kind of excuse out there. But when when someone, like I say, when I myself find tracks less than three miles from my home that are that are less than 24 hours old, I get really excited because I know that a Sasquatch has been there. Well, you know, you said something there that I thought was interesting that I want to hit on for a second. You, you, you know, there, there are skeptics and then there are debunkers right. and I think skepticism can be healthy and it can be useful because it can it can keep you from being a sucker yeah that's true um, 
And, but here's the thing. There, there's a part of this that I like to drop in there, and it's a term I like to use, and it's called intellectual honesty. And here's what that means. It means that we all have a worldview. We all have a certain construct and a way that we see the world. But I feel that that should be subject to new information. You learn new things, so that means your worldview changes, right? I knew something that I didn't know yesterday, for example. And I think that we must do this to maintain that kind of intellectual integrity. The problem with the debunker is the debunker is never going to change even in the face of new information. Right. And so that's kind of what we're struggling against. So I swear, I think that if you had a body that was 100% legitimate, there are people who would look in that and say, I don't buy it. Who, who do you yeah, think so has to find the thing to, to cause the entire world, or let's say even the American uh, social order to mm -hmm. accept it? Do you think maybe the President of the United States? Would it take I don't, someone like the President of the United States to say, hey, this know. is your I don't know. I mean, I think it's a great question. I, I don't know. But I mean, I think that things are so strange now. And I think part of it, the Internet has turned everybody into an armchair expert of everything. I agree. <laughs> I mean, I see people I see people online arguing with 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 uh, theoretical physicists and astrobiologists and and, and people with I see I see uh people arguing with people who, you know, 30 years ago, you wouldn't dare, right? right? And so what's happened is that we're all experts at everything. And so I can show you a certain level of evidence for a particular idea, for a particular concept, for a particular theory. And all you have to do, because you already know anything, is say, well, I don't buy it. Yeah, I think the the... the, the the clincher for this is going to be when it's the three-page fold-out of National Geographic, and you've got all the people that are, probably you're not going to get people that are going to come back and say, hey, I was wrong about this, uh, oh, but no. you're going to have, you know, the, the people who get to do the job of dissecting it, uh, they're all going to be publishing papers on it, they're all going to be having their picture made with it, you know, look at what happened when they found uh, the, the Otzi up in the Alps. Right. You know, he's been there for 5,000 years. Uh, he had like 50-some tattoos, and they're going, wow, it's really changed people's viewpoint of, you know, uh, that that time. And, you know, they have all these theories all of a sudden. Well, he must have been in an ice storm, and, you know, uh, he just got overwhelmed by the cold. Or, you know, nobody says, oh, well, he just died, and that's where he died, and he got buried in an ice <laughs> age, and we just not found him, you know. Yeah. Who would have There's always the... the they say it dogmatically like they were there when it happened, you know, and that's the part well, that cracks me up about science. The first thing is when when they, when they when the scientists validate Bigfoot. Now, you know, you do understand that one of the first things that's going to happen is that they're going to rename it. Okay? Oh, yeah. Please understand that because they can't, you can't possibly live with, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're an anthropologist or you're a zoologist, you don't want to have to hear that word every day. Right. right. So they're going to rename it um, in order to kind of commandeer it away from cryptozoology, right? Uh, yep. And so they're going to make up some name for it. And, and so they never again have to say Bigfoot uh, because, you know, people like you, people like me, you know, we're always going to be there saying, hey, we told you. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, we told you it was real. Um, and so that's going to happen. And they're going to act as if, oh, yeah, we, you know, listen, we knew it all the time. You know, we discover new species all the time. No big deal. You know, the giant panda, the coelacanth, the, the lowland, the silverback gorilla, whatever. You know, so this is just another one. No, but you guys for the last 50 years said that this wasn't real. Well, but, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? they like to they like to say there's no uh, there's no evidence in the fossil record 
But what they won't tell you is there's very little evidence in the fossil record of the chimpanzee, for example. And, and they've only come out recently with some, and it's only because they knew where to look. So right. that's what their, their excuse is, you know, it's kind of like listening to uh, a, a prosecuting attorney make his case, and, and they lay out the evidence for the jury, and and they're really, honestly, it's, it's almost like a, a, a court of law. You know, it isn't necessarily what the evidence says. Sometimes it's just which story the judge or the jury, one, believes, who, who gives the most compelling, uh, you know, argument for the most part. Yeah, and I, I, you know, and yeah, I love that fossil record stuff because, well, first of all, like I said, it's just patently untrue, and they're counting on people's ignorance. Okay, right. they're banking on people's ignorance. Um, there are creatures that are in the fossil record, been documented in the fossil record, that absolutely substantiate. The possibility of this creature being real. Yes, uh, and Giganopithecus uh, is my favorite one that they talk about. They've got a one piece of one jaw and a few teeth, and they've made an exactly. entire animal out of it. And, <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, I think that if I if I was reduced to like wagering, I would wager if we found out tomorrow what Bigfoot is, my money would be on Giganopithecus. And yeah, I'm 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 right there with you. Uh, the thing that cracks me up is uh, how many people can be taken in by uh, Animal Planet, for example. Finding Bigfoot was their number one show, sure. and then some of these uh, some of these programs have come out, and they've got this CGI footage of a mermaid or oh, yeah. or something else, and people are totally taken in by it. And then they'll come back and go, "Hey, we we made the whole thing up. These people are not really doctors; they were actors." You know, this kind of thing, it happens all the time. Uh, yeah. It's just about ratings, you know. They're just trying to sell sure it is. Sell TV time, you know, to companies that want to have commercials on, you know, I programs saw, that people watch. I saw the mermaid thing, and here's the thing. Yeah, it was very entertaining. It was very entertaining, uh, but you better not be sitting there thinking to yourself, wow, these guys have videos of actual mermaids. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, the uh, the people in the in the world that uh, will argue with you about whether or not wrestling is real, and keep in mind, I, I'm saying this growing up, I, I loved watching wrestling. I also loved watching monster trucks, but I can't drive one down the road. And uh, yeah, well, the you know the the these type of things, it's a double edged sword because on one hand, I am glad that some of these subjects have kind of been brought into the mainstream and people are talking about I'm I'm glad about that. Uh, and then on the other hand, of course, these things in many respects are being presented to the public as an entertainment product. And and you must understand because it is an entertainment product, uh, that's got to affect how you receive it. Okay? Uh, exactly. You know, so uh, finding Bigfoot is an entertainment product. Okay, right. Uh, and and so you know, these guys are not going to find Bigfoot. The whole the whole purpose of the show is to watch us, wa you know, watch them go from place to place, and throw out these theories and, and show these ridiculous thermal images. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it, it's a double-edged sword, um, and so you, people have to learn to discriminate between science and research and, and documentation and uh, the kind of, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the light soda pop version of that, which is what happens yeah. on the they came uh, to East Tennessee, the Finding Bigfoot crew, and they did an episode in East Tennessee. And we were involved with that episode. And we had what was called a um, Bigfoot Day in Knox County here in, uh, in East Tennessee. And uh, we had over 2,000 people come to the, uh, to the program where the cast of the Finding Bigfoot show was introduced to the public, and they signed autographs. and and these things like that. And, and East Tennessee Bigfoot had a big, 
um, set up there as well. And we talked to, I talked my, personally to over 100 people that night. But what I found that was so intriguing to me was so many kids and young people were just, they were just so excited about getting involved in Bigfoot research. And I thought, well, you know, that's great because it's giving, it's giving the youth, it's giving young people uh, the idea that, well, maybe not everything that the scientific community is telling us is true, for one thing. But one thing I found that really, because I talk to so many people about this stuff on a daily basis, and, and I talk to people all over the country about this, and most of the time, the stories are not uh, sugary and sweet and spice and all that good stuff. Uh, a lot of the times, these creatures seem upset. They seem possibly even dangerous. And we have young people that may be even within the sound of my voice tonight who are going out in the woods by themselves and hunting Bigfoot. And it would be terrible to think that someone would get hurt or even killed by an angry animal because, you know, these, you know, this is not, we're not selling beef jerky here. We don't know enough about these creatures to say they're safe or they're not. They may be they may be quite dangerous if put in a, if put in a binder or, or back into a corner. Uh, you, you're talking about something that's seven to eight feet tall and seven or eight hundred pounds. It could destroy somebody pretty quickly if it wanted to, especially sure. if it let's say that it had young close by that it was protecting or something of that nature. Well, there's been some terrible chimp attacks, and chimps are you know not yeah. even a fourth of the size potentially. So it's just so. It, it, it chills me to think that, you know, I have I have people who contact me. Well, my five-year-old son just loves Bigfoot, and I think that's great. But please don't let them go out in the woods by himself. Please keep your hands and arms around that child at all times when you're out in the woods. Because, you know, I've, I've read stories and I've heard things, <laughs> and Bigfoot has been accused of some pretty bad stuff. Well, like you said, I mean, you know, whether, trying to trying to figure out you know what the you know the disposition of this creature is is ridiculous because again uh this is this is a creature that could uh, uh, maim and kill a person with relative ease uh, exactly. just just based on what just, just the the physical description of it uh and well, so an orangutan is like 10 times the strength of a man and if you watch them they they climb trees with they don't even it doesn't it looks effortless and i you know i'm i'm grossly overweight like a lot of people in america and if i tried to climb a tree with just my just my arms by starting off i wouldn't get very far you know exactly so it, it, ima okay so if you imagine the strength of an orangutan or a chimpanzee and now and now you're talking about this thing 8 9 feet tall Exactly. Six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Forget about it. Yeah, yeah. match. Yeah. yeah, and so, but it's, here's the thing. In order to contemplate what kind of threat this thing can be to a person, first you've got to get past the realization that it is real. True. And see that that's the thing. So you're talking about kids traipsing through the woods. Uh, sometimes I think that these kids, you know, they, it's ha it's half a joke to them. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, and uh, so hopefully, you know, nothing unfortunate would happen. Well, yeah, you know, uh, these expeditions and people go out in the woods because it's fun and everybody loves nature. And yeah, we think Bigfoot is interesting, but this thing is real. Are you prepared? for an encounter and what would you do this this you know uh, there's there's a lot of things that people have to think about hey, there's a lot of people killed every year still in the united states especially since uh i'm, I'm talking about grizzly bears because they've they've allowed them to uh you know the, the population has grown a lot in the last 20 years a lot of ranchers out west you know uh, montana wyoming idaho are losing you know sometimes 50 sheep in one night, and, and uh, the, the government, you know, uh, has allowed, uh, they've reintroduced wolves in certain areas, and uh, I'm saying all this, well, the area where I come from, they, they made a law where you cannot hunt black bear or cougar with dogs anymore, 
and the population of both of the animals has exploded in the last 10 years, uh, uh-huh. and, and they're dangerous. You know, people can get killed uh, and do get killed every year when they get too close to grizzly bears, or there's been black bear attacks. We had a black bear attack here in Tennessee just a couple of years ago that was terrible. Uh, there was some people killed. Uh, you know, mountain lion attacks and this kind of thing, and, and to me, uh, people are, are naive if they if they get the idea that they're going to go up and, uh, you know, they, they people do stupid things. I mean, they, they, they go up and try to feed grizzly bears in Yellowstone and uh, bad stuff happens. And it's the same thing with this, you know, if you, if, say you did just have a chance encounter and you, and you came across one and you were, you were trying to, uh, to uh, you know, maybe feed it or make friends with it, um, Apes don't like eye contact. You make eye contact with an ape, and it means something completely different than it would to you or I. You know, they view it as a challenge. If some other animals are that way, you look at them, and they they want to attack. You know, so I mean, I don't think it's too wise. Well, see, that's why I'm kind of skeptical, or not skeptical. I'm I'm kind of wary of this. You know, you know, we start talking about Bigfoot or people when you start calling right. people, and so I'm, I, I'm, you know, hold on a minute. You know, I. I know, I know how some of the Native American stories go, uh, but you know you kind of have to take that as an allegory or metaphor, whatever. Sure, yeah, you know, they, they, they refer to a lot of animals as the brother exactly. of wolf or coyote or eagles or whatever they they identified with them. Right. Uh, um, but you know, that's, that's, you know, uh, I hear people talking about oh these these are the people these are the people of nature and so this whole idea that they're that you know you can approach them like you would you know a neighbor or somebody you meet on the street I I'm just kind of you know we don't know that to be the case just yet yeah I really don't think that uh, Bigfoot is is any kind of human and I'll tell you why uh, almost every uh, tribe or or uh, species, or, or whatever you want to call it. every different kind of people eventually uh, put on clothing, find some kind of protection for their feet, start learning how to make fire. They use weapons. They can hunt. Uh, there, you know, there, there's a big debate in the Bigfoot world over whether Bigfoot is an ape or Bigfoot is a, a human. And I'm sure everybody's figured out by now what my theory is, <laughs> but. Anyway, that so that the idea that uh, you know they have, they have uh, some kind of a advanced language or you know whatever I just I just think that uh, by now they would have uh, they would have developed the same as any other kind of people that they find all over the world. So. I've got a question. <laughs> let me yeah. let me ask one real quick, and I'm going to ask this to Matt because Matt, you did her show before, and I noticed that when you got off her show. You had several radio shows in Knoxville. And how did they receive you? Was it very warm, believable, or, you know, they didn't get you in there and try to ridicule or anything, did they? It was sort of neutral. It was, it, it kind of went back and forth a little bit on all those sure. shows. Uh, there, was, uh, there was always the one person who was interested, and then there was the skeptic. And, uh, you know, that's fine. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with the skeptics, but, you know, they're not going to sway me because I, I've seen the evidence and I've talked to enough people to right. know. Well, I'm glad it's acceptable. I know you didn't do Phil's show, did you? I have done Phil's show. That's, think, where, Phil? that's where Matt and I became friends was because of the Phil show in 2005. Oh, okay, cool. I've done Phil's show before. So, Phil, he's pretty respectful, isn't he? Yeah, he was a very nice guy. I mean, he he didn't mm-hmm. he, he made some fun at the Bigfoot subject, but he didn't make fun of me. And and, and right. that's fine. I, I didn't feel like I was being uh, uh, toyed with or anything like that. He was very respectful, very nice. So I would love yeah, to Phil's show. Yeah, Phil's he's an institution up in this part of the country, and everybody loves him. I don't I don't know anybody who doesn't like Phil Williams. He's he's been around here for years, and he's got a very popular show. Yep, I've done his show, and I did it when he was on uh, Rock 104 back way a while ago. But I've got a suggestion. If we're going to find uh, Bigfoot and give him a name, I think we ought to use the Beatles. You know, Uh-oh. not call him the Beatles, but, I mean, Lucy oh. was a name for oh, yeah, you know, one of the finds. So I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, what would we call him? Sergeant Pepper? Uh, Bungalow <laughs> Bill? <laughs> Uh, oh, bloody, oh, bloody. Uh, you know, uh, I was just trying to, oh, mean Mr. Mustard. I mean. Okay, why don't we mix it up a little bit and call it Jude Foot. 
I yeah, can well, Jude. Yeah. Jude. <laughs> I've, I've already got the name picked out, guys. It's going to be the North American Wood Ape. North American Wood. Like hey, that's that's actually kind of catchy. Book. I like that. I actually like that, Matt. <laughs> yeah, because the, the scientists, the the mainstream scientists, are not gonna keep calling it Bigfoot. Oh, absolutely. Oh no, they're not gonna. They're not gonna. They're not gonna do that. I mean, uh, the most they would do a, as kind of deference to the Native Americans would be Sasquatch, but. I can just see it, you know. I can just see some guy coming on, you know, one of these, uh, you know, CNN or whatever, one of these talk shows, one of these guys from the University of whatever, and it's, you know, see, that's the, fir the first order of business is to rename it, get away from this ridiculous uh, Bigfoot. Yeah, they'll have a they'll have a Latin name, and it'll probably be something exactly. like was on the Roadrunner cartoons, like yeah, you know, various giantess or something. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I you know I I I think that day is coming. I hope that day is coming where we can kind of scratch this off the list. Um, well, I believe it would be just the beginning. Actually, I mean, if yeah. once once this creature is officially discovered, uh, there's definitely going to have to be legislation put into place to protect them because they're definitely rare. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably near extinction. They uh, and it, this would definitely be something that the good old boys in my neck of the woods would be out looking for on a regular basis. Well, it's great politics. I mean, it's great politics for to, to stand up in the legislature and 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 uh, uh, propose uh, laws to protect. It's it's great politics. And um, what, now the the funny thing is going to be to see which congressman, which senator, which you know, which one of the who's going to be stupid enough to oppose this. Well, I'll tell you, we actually are fortunate to have a former state senator in our group. He's actually the mayor of Knox County. And he, uh, he's really eager to, to be the one to write the bill for Tennessee to yeah. protect the animal. He, sure. He's actually already got something drafted. Yeah. Yeah, he's, got, he's already got it, and he's just waiting so he can just kind of click the send button, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, He's I dying to rub everybody else's nose in it, too. He's received a lot of uh, ribbing over his belief in it. Sure, sure. I, I imagine that that is true of a lot of uh, different uh, uh, office holders across the country who are just kind of waiting for the green light because it's a win-win politically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, states out in the Northwest have already enacted laws to protect Bigfoot, even though they're not officially recognized. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's already in the works. It's already been done in some states. I know Washington State has... Uh, as uh, laws on the books, you can't shoot a Bigfoot. Uh, if you do and it's proven, you'll go to jail. Oh. Wow. And actually, uh, the uh, the law in Tennessee has been passed that any creature, any animal that is in, does not have a specified hunting season is off limits to be shot or killed in any way that would be um, other than accidental, of course. So uh, that falls under any creature that doesn't have a specific hunting season and Bigfoot does not have a hunting season, so can't kill one. Covers the basis. You didn't even have to mention Bigfoot to get it enacted. Yeah, if I say you'll have enough money to wiggle out of it, I suppose somebody will come back and it happens and say it was some sort of a premeditated act on my part, but, you know, you got enough money, you can get out of anything. <laughs> wow. Well, great stuff, guys. This has uh, been very, very good tonight. Gary, I I'm impressed. Gary, William pulled another one in here tonight. <laughs> yeah, I actually did. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've known Matt a long time, and uh, I'm just fascinated with his work, and good luck to you guys. And yeah, Matt and Ron. Bring us back guy. a big Great fish. job, guys. And if you find one, Matt, come get me. I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to get in touch with you. Uh, the next All call right. I get, and you need to come on. Bring the vet. We'll haul it home in the vet. Yeah, I bet the Bigfoot would really like that Corvette convertible, wouldn't he? <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me Thanks too. a lot for having us, guys. We had a good time. Oh, guys, oh, it's, it's been place. great. But everyone, you've been listening to Matt and Ron right here from the East Tennessee Bigfoot <laughs> Research Organization. Make sure you check these guys out at EastTennesseeBigfoot.org. And you do spell out the word Tennessee on that. Great stuff, guys. A lot of information. And uh, we can't thank you enough for coming on here tonight sharing all this great information with us and uh all kinds of nice intelligent questions rolling out of william like always so uh great Thanks stuff william. oh it's Have our pleasure for having you but everyone stay tuned next thursday night 
what we have scheduled as of right now is executive producer for Coast to Coast Radio, Mr. Tom Danzeiser, George Norrie's executive producer. So uh, that is what is in the works. We'll keep you updated, and uh, hopefully we can get him on here with us next week. But everyone, have a wonderful and safe weekend. Thanks for tuning in tonight. You've been listening to Man, Myths, and Monsters right here on the Pop Odyssey Radio Network and the WHVR Digital Broadcasting Network. Have a great night, everyone. You've been listening to Man, Myths, and Monsters on the Pop Odyssey Radio Network. Pop Odyssey Radio is a production of Pop Odyssey Entertainment. We'd like to thank the following parties for this live broadcast. Web hosting provided by Bluehost Professional Web Hosting. Voiceover talents provided by Tammy Miller. Shows produced by R. Gary Patterson and Stephen Wren. Archives produced and edited by Adobe Audition, bringing you the ultimate solution in sound quality. Grab your copy at adobe.com. For more information on Pop Odyssey Radio, hosts, sponsors, or access to previously recorded